All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show. How did the Giants do in the amateur draft? Well, they got a couple of really interesting players. We'll talk about them next. But first, Pig and a Pickle. Check them out. They're the title sponsor of the Krug Show. They're open seven days a week. They're in Corda Madera and Emeryville. And they're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. Or until they run out, go get some brisket, get some brisket chili. Go say hi to Damon and Mary. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video is also brought to you by our good friends at Sharp Corner Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're at 205 Cypress Avenue down in Pacific Grove, California, all on the Monterey Peninsula. Call my good buddy Anthony Catania at 831-521-5264 for all your sports cards and collectible needs. All right, the amateur draft uh, came and went, and the Giants made a couple of interesting um, selections, two that really make me kind of excited about their future. They want to, you know, one thing the Giants do a lot is they go, you know, year after year, they always say, well, the best players coming out in the draft are the high school position players. And yet the Giants for the last 25 years, almost, almost on an annual basis, per, uh, prioritize drafting college pitching. Um, so, and, and they haven't had the best success as far as amateur draft consistency through the years. That being said, they did draft, you know, Linscombe and Kane and Bumgarner and, you know, Posey and Sandoval and Panic and Belt and won three titles along, on, along the way with some pretty, with, you know, a big homegrown core. So it's not like we can put the Giants out as some disaster mode. They've won three titles doing it their way. But they usually go extremely college heavy while the industry trends are to go with high school position players that that's thought to be the high end um, commodity. The Giants go college pitching more times than not. They went extremely college heavy again in this draft, taking only one high school player who was drafted in the 11th round. Um, in the sixth round, the Giants drafted a guy named Robert Hipwell, a college third baseman who's got lots of power. He played in 18 games this last year but he had a 706 slugging percentage in uh, 2023 giants. You got to remember also did not have a lot of draft capital um, in this 2024 amateur draft. Why? Well, because of their off season signings, when you sign free agents, you lose draft picks. So they only had one pick inside the top 100 that came 13th overall. Um, and then they didn't pick again until the fourth round. And that's because they signed Snell and they signed Chapman. And when you sign those guys in free agency, you forfeit draft picks and they forfeited their second and third round picks. So they picked in the first and then did not pick again until uh, the fourth round. So, um, you know, it's, they only had one pick in the top 100 and that was 13th. And at 13 overall, they took Florida state outfielder, James Tibbs, the third. And Tibbs is an interesting player. He won the ACC player of the year award. He had a breakout uh, junior year, hit 363 his junior year, 28 home runs, 95 RBIs, had a 1264 OPS. Those were all career highs. So, um, and, and Tibbs is an interesting guy because he, you know, this is the highest a Florida State uh, hitter has been drafted since, uh, yeah, there was this guy, his name was, uh, escapes me. Yeah, Buster Posey, Buster Posey. Um, and so Tibbs, you know, is the highest Florida State guy to go in the first round since Buster Posey. And Giants fans are like, hey, if it goes as good as it did with Buster, great pick. But James Tibbs the third, um, he's a he's a left fielder, right fielder, corner outfielder. He's 21. He's probably going to play left in the big leagues because he doesn't have a great outfield arm. But this guy is just an awesome hitter. Freshman year at Florida State, 310, 10 home runs, 964 OPS. Sophomore year, Florida State, 339, 17 bombs on 1153 OPS. And then this year, as I said, 363, 28 bombs, 1264 OPS. He was the ACC uh, player of the year. Michael Holmes says, the Giants scouting director says, we really believe in his bat. They love his hit tool. They love the fact that he's going to hit and hit with power. They also feel like Tibbs is maybe the closest of anybody in the draft uh, to reaching the big leagues. Um, he played really well in the Cape Cod League, which is a wooden bat league, hit over 300. Giants put a lot of credence into guys who go down on the Cape and handle that atmosphere and produce. It's a pro-like atmosphere. 
you know, it's night games. Uh, people pay ticket, pay money to go see the games. There's, there's people heckling. I mean, it's a little, it's a pro atmosphere for sure. And it's a pro, it's an all-star circuit. Um, and it's a wood bat circuit and the giants put tons of credence in guys who do well there. This guy did well there, like many of their, of their draft picks. And it might've been the difference in why they took him. Um, he played well in the Cape Cod league. He's a Georgia native. I, uh, you know, supposedly he had over a hundred people Tibbs did at his house for the draft. And, you know, the giants drafted Buster Posey fifth overall in 2008. And if Tibbs can be the next Buster Posey, they'll be thrilled. So, um, you know, so, and as I said, they didn't have a second or a third because they signed Blake Snell and they signed Matt Chapman. So after they took, um, Tibbs at 13, they didn't pick again until pick 113. But with that pick, they may have taken the sleeper of the entire draft in the Mississippi State outfielder, Dakota Jordan, who you know is one of the players considered to be right there at the very top as far as steals in this draft. MLB Pipeline ranked Dakota Jordan 34th overall. A lot of people had him. He was in the ESPN and the MLB draft coverage. Um, you know, right around the 20s, they're like Dakota Jordan started popping up on the list as, you know, Jonathan Mayo's highest rated player and, you know, Jim Callis's highest rated player. And, um, the, you know, the Giants get him at 113 and he was projected to go 34 by MLB pi Pipeline. So, you know, it's he's a plus runner. Uh, if you've watched this kid, Dakota Jordan, big, powerful athlete, plus runner, plus power. Um, a lot of people think he's got the upside to be the best power speed combo player in this entire draft. He posted a 1.129 OPS in 2024, which is a fat, fat number. Now, there's a lot of swing and miss there, you know, there's which is the polite way of saying he strikes out too much. In 63 games, he struck out. Jordan struck out 84 times. So, obviously, that's going to be something the Giants are going to have to clean up, and that's probably why he fell from, you know, in the 30s to, you know, 113. Um, so, that's that's one area. But, you know, the Giants went real college heavy. They, they only took one high school player, um, you know, and that was a guy they took in the 11th round. Um, and this is the fifth draft since Farhan Zaidi took over the Giants. And, you know, um, you know, and, and he may not have the benefit of the doubt anymore, to be completely honest, um, because Giants fans are, 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 you know, at this point getting a little impatient. But to me, I think this is they've drafted two guys here now. I, you know, I think you got to credit Farhan and Michael Holmes for getting the Giants farm system going better than what Bobby Evans had it going at the end there and saves as well. Um, I don't know about any of these guys, to be completely honest. I talk a lot about the draft in basketball, a lot about the draft in football, and there's a lot more um, certainty that you know I can speak about with the prospects than in baseball. Why? Because base the baseball draft is a true crapshoot. I mean, uh, you know, Mike Piazza went in like the 60th round. You know, I mean, uh, Jim Tomei went in like the 21st round. Jeff Kent was great at Cal. He went in like the 17th round or something. You know. And there are guys, you know, the, the Giants have been taking guys in the first round for years, Harry Brown and others who have just, you know, flamed out horribly. So it's very, very difficult to project a 17-year-old high school kid to what he's going to be seven years from now at 24 or eight years from now at 25. And it's even hard to project a college player. Um, you know, they all, Giants also selected a first baseman named Jeremiah Jenkins, who's a college bat who hit over 40 home runs over the last two seasons. But I, to me, if there's one, if there's a reason to be excited about this giants draft, it's the, the two dot top guys, you know, two guys at the top of the draft, James Tibbs, the third, um, who's th thought to be one of the great pure hitters in all of college baseball. He's, he's probably going to be in the big leagues by September of 2025. Um, he looks like a guy who's going to hit for power and average tremendous bat. But, you know, they're saying he may be a platoon outfielder because he doesn't hit lefties that well. He's a left-handed hitting outfielder. Um, but, you know, at least he'd be the, the meaty part of the platoon, right? Because there's a lot more right-handed pitching. So he'd play a lot. But there are some people that think he's a platoon guy. Obviously, the Giants think he's much more than that. But to me, reading about Tibbs, hearing his teammates talk about him, uh, his teammate went next to um, 
to the Cubs uh, with the 14th pick. And he was like, Hey man, Tibbs was our leader. And, you know, he's really emotional about Tibbs going to the giants at 13. Um, and you know, you can see Tibbs looks like a, like a big time hitter. So if they got, if Tibbs is the big time hitter, he looks like, and Dakota Jordan is the steal that everybody's saying he is that right there could be the, the, you know, could make this draft. That could be the giants third and fourth place hitters, uh, down the road. So I, you know, I can't say with certainty, this was a good draft, but I I'll say this based on what I've seen and read and heard about James Tibbs the third in Dakota Jordan. I think the Giants got two really good players at the top of the draft. Tell me what you think in the comments below. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. And thanks to Underdog Fantasy for sponsoring this video. And thanks to all of you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.